Hello, hello. I'm so excited because we are at the onset of a series of videos in which we'll be exploring applications of the different properties of parallelograms that we have discussed so far and solve problems from the easiest to the trickiest. In short, this is a problem video. Be motivated already? Well, you have to trust me in this one. I'll try to make it intuitive for you. But then, it's important that you pay attention because applying the properties is what will make you truly understand the different aspects of this shape called a parallelogram. So, ready to tackle some interesting problems? Let's roll. Now, before we delve right into solving the problems, it's imperative that you recapitulate the different properties of parallelograms and even the conditions that we have discussed so far. So, pause the video here and go through them thoroughly so that you are ready to apply them in the upcoming problems. Once done, resume so we can begin with the applications. Done! Great! So, now that we have armed ourselves with the required properties and the conditions, let the battle begin! We'll start with a simple question. This one states that the angles of a quadrilateral are in the ratio 3 is to 5 is to 9 is to 30. We have to find all the angles of the quadrilateral. Hey, this one's super easy. We don't even need a diagram for this one. You can probably solve it mentally. Since the question talks only about angles, we know that the property which can solve this is either of these two. But there is no mention of opposite angles here. So you can rest assured that we will be using the angle sum property here. The question tells us that the different angles of a quadrilateral are in the ratio 3 is to 5 is to 9 is to 30. Now, if we take the common factor in this ratio as x, then the different angles would just measure 3x, 5x, 9x and 13x respectively. Now, the angle sum property of a quadrilateral taught us that the sum of all angles is 360 degrees, right? So, 3x plus 5x plus 9x plus 13x is equal to 360 degrees. Then, 30x is equal to 360 degrees or x is equal to 12 degrees. Now that the value of x is known, finding the different angles is a cakewalk. 3x is just 3 into 12 degrees, which gives us 36 degrees. Similarly, the other angles are 60 degrees, 108 degrees and 156 degrees respectively. To be sure of our answer, we can cross-check by adding all these angles to see if they add up to 360 degrees. Here they do. So we can be sure that we absolutely nailed it. That was a piece of cake. Well, if you know the concepts thoroughly, everything will seem to be a cakewalk. Moving on to the second question. This one asks us to show that if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other at right angles, then it is a rhombus. Now, this one's also very easy to prove. But for such questions, it's always better to draw the diagrams first so it becomes easier to visualize. So, how do we get the diagram right for this one? One way is to first draw two diagonals which bisect each other at right angles and then join the different endpoints like this. Another not so dignified way of making the diagram is to first make a rhombus and then draw out its diagonals to show that they bisect each other at right angles. Since we are eventually going to prove that this quadrilateral is a rhombus, starting with the rhombus itself nullifies all chances of the diagram going wrong. Nevertheless, both methods will get you the desired diagram so you can begin solving mathematically. So now that the diagram is ready, Let's just name it A, B, C, D such that the diagonals A, C and B, D bisect each other perpendicularly at O. 
Now, we have to prove mathematically that ABCD is a rhombus. Well, we know that a rhombus is just a parallelogram in which all the sides are equal. So, our attempt should be to prove that A, ABCD is a parallelogram and B, all its sides are equal. So, looking at the first one, how do we prove that ABCD is a parallelogram? This is where our recent learnings come in. We could use one of the many properties and conditions that we have just recapitulated. But which one? Always let the question guide you. The question itself says that the diagonals bisect each other. Remember the condition? If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then it is a parallelogram. Thus, ABCD is a parallelogram. We proved the first part already. Let's head to the second one. For the second part, to show that the sides are equal, a good approach would be to use the given information and try to prove some triangles congruent, then show that their corresponding sides, which are also the sides of the parallelogram, are equal. Now, just by looking at the diagram, anyone can say that these two pairs of sides and then these two angles are equal. So, triangles AOB and COB must be congruent. So, mathematically, in triangles AOB and COB, AO is equal to OC because BD bisects AC. Angle AOB is equal to angle COB because each of them is a right angle. And OB is equal to OB because it's common in both the triangles. So, side, angle, side. Thus, triangles AOB and COB are congruent by the SAS criteria. Then, AB is equal to CB because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. See, we just proved that two sides of this parallelogram are equal. We are probably on the right track. So, in the same way, we can prove that triangles AOD and COD are congruent which implies that AD is equal to CD. So, we proved that these two sides are equal and these two sides are equal. But, how do we prove that the other two pairs are also equal? Well, we can continue proving the triangles congruent or we can just use a property. We already know that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal. So, AB is equal to opposite side CD and CB is equal to opposite side AD. Then, using all the pairs of equal sides, we can infer that AB is equal to CB is equal to CD is equal to AD. See, we just proved the second part of the requirement. It's safe to say then that ABCD is a rhombus. Now, while proving this, we unknowingly proved another condition that in a quadrilateral, if the diagonals bisect each other at right angles, then it is a rhombus. That was pretty interesting, wasn't it? We could have actually solved it in a minute. But since it was one of the initial questions, I wanted to show you how a good approach will always help you save time while solving problems. So now, let us quickly solve another one. Now, this one asks us to show that if the diagonals of a quadrilateral are equal and they bisect each other at right angles, then it is a square. Well, this one's basically an upgrade from the previous question. Here too, the diagonals are bisecting each other at right angles. But additionally, they are also equal. Now, we have already proved that such a quadrilateral where the diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly or at right angles, so to say, is a rhombus. But the question asks us to prove that the quadrilateral is a square. So, how do we prove that this rhombus is also a square? Well, the additional information helps us here. Let us see how. So, taking it from the top, let's take a quadrilateral A, B, C, D where the diagonals AC and BD are equal and they bisect each other perpendicularly at O. Now, we know that when the diagonals bisect each other, 
then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram and when they bisect at right angles then it is a rhombus so abcd is a rhombus by the property we proved in the previous question now you may choose to use the property directly or you can also follow the same steps as we did in the previous question the end motive is just to prove that abcd is a rhombus now we know that squares are just rhombuses where each interior angle measures 90 degrees right so all that's left to prove here is that each interior angle in this rhombus is a right angle so how do we go about that well it definitely has to do with some property of angles right but which one if you notice abcd is essentially a parallelogram so ab is parallel to dc then if you think about it da acts as a transversal between them so angles d and a form a pair of consecutive angles now we know that in case of parallel lines the consecutive angles are supplementary then it's pretty evident that angle d plus angle a is equal to 180 degrees now we just have to show that angles d and a are equal which will eventually result in each of them being a right angle but how do we prove that angle d is equal to angle a well one way could be by proving that triangle cda and bad are congruent so angle d is equal to angle a because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles so mathematically in triangles cda and bad cd is equal to ba because the sides of a rhombus are equal da is equal to ad because it's common now comes the time to use our master card the additional information it tells us that the diagonals are equal so ac is equal to db thus side 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 we can say that triangles cda and bad are congruent by the sss criteria it's easy to conclude now that angle d is equal to angle a because they are just corresponding parts of congruent triangles now using this information in the previous equation where angle d plus angle a is equal to 180 degrees we can very easily show that angle d is equal to angle a is equal to 90 degrees now in the same way we can show that angle c plus angle b is equal to 180 degrees because they form a pair of consecutive angles and triangles dcb and abc are congruent by sss criterion so angle c is equal to angle b then using this information in the previous equation we will eventually arrive at angle c is equal to angle b is equal to 90 degrees see we just proved that all the angles of this rhombus are right angles now the fun part is we could have actually avoided a lot of steps here because honestly they are quite unnecessary after proving that angle d is equal to angle a is equal to 90 degrees we could have just used the property which taught us that in a parallelogram the opposite angles are equal so here angle b is equal to opposite angle d which as we already proved measures 90 degrees similarly angle c is equal to angle a is equal to 90 degrees see it became so much easier and faster to prove that each angle of this rhombus is a right angle or in other words abcd is a square we finally arrive at the end of this video i know it was a long video but i wanted you to understand the different approaches there could be to solving a problem and how the right approach will always help you save time while solving a problem timing matters a lot right and solving a problem swiftly without missing a step is something that can come only with constant practice So let's continue solving problems till we start knowing them like the back of our hands. 
Some really interesting questions await you in the next video. So, if you feel like it, go through this video once again and catch me in the next one.